Hello and welcome again to another day of classes. Today we're going to be continuing with the Interchange 5th edition level 3, the Green Book. And today we're going to be starting with the Unit 13. As always, we start with a language summary or the vocabulary for this lesson. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with some nouns. And the first one is assumption. An assumption is something that you accept as true without question or proof. Maybe you don't investigate much, but you already accept it, accept it as true. Some other words for assumption are supposition, presumption, premise, presupposition, hypothesis, conjecture, inference, theory, or guess. Criticism. The act of saying that something or someone is bad. Basically saying all of the bad aspects of a thing or a person. Demand, an insistent and peremptory request made as of right. When you demand something, it's when you're requesting for something because it's your right, it's your own, you need it, you must have it. For example, if you work a lot, you demand more money. Excuse, what is your excuse? Basically, an excuse is when you're giving reasons of why you didn't do something. Maybe you were late to class or late to, to, to your job, and then you give an excuse like, oh, look, I was working with my kids, so I, 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 it got delayed by, by cares of those kids. And that can be an excuse. Or there was a lot of traffic. I was in a traffic jam. That is another excuse. Prediction. A prediction is basically when you or see the future. It's like you're talking about something that have not happened, but depending on the information that you already have, like maybe you have a lot of information about the weather, and you predict that because of the different signs that you have been seeing in these days, that tomorrow is going to rain. If you say, mm, tomorrow is going to rain, that is a prediction. You don't know if that's going to be true, but According to your information, maybe it's going to be right. Suggestion. A suggestion is like an advice on doing things. Maybe you're feeling kind of sad and just for suggestion on how to stop being sad. And one suggestion could be like, oh, hang, hang out with your friends. That might make you happy. Suspicion. A belief or idea that something may be true. When you are suspicious and you have a suspicion of something, it's like, hmm, I think this is going, this is happening right now. You're not sure, but you have the idea, like, you're almost sure that it's bad. Warning. Something that makes you understand there is a possible danger or problem, especially one in the, in the future. A warning, it's basically a type of alarm to tell you that Bad things can happen if you continue doing or being in such a place. For example, if you see this type of warning of high voltage in a electronic device, it tells it's telling you like don't touch it because you can get shocked. Announcement: something that someone says officially, giving information about something. An announcement is a public information related to something. Chat. An examination of something in order to make certain that it is correct or the way it should be. When you check something, you make sure that it is okay, basically. For example, if you are cooking something, you first check, you take a look of the thing that you're cooking before taking it out. As well as you can check your oil of your car. Doorbell. The doorbell is this type of buttons that are outside doors of houses that are used to, you know, call the attentions of the people, the, of the attention of the people living inside. That it usually has a ring, like ding ding, something like that. Pipe. Pipe can be different things. A pipe can be this, and it's used to smoke. But also, you can have pipes that water goes through them or other liquids. Fear, an unpleasant emotion or thought that you have when you are frightened or worried by something dangerous, painful or bad that is happening or might happen. 
when you feel like you're gonna be hit or bite or beat by something, you're feeling fear. Fight. When you're fighting, or when you fight, it's when you try to harm another person, either physically or psychologically. Those are fights. Maybe you're afraid and have fear because of a fight that is that they might get to you. Flare. A sudden increase in the brightness of a fire. That it's a flare. Pet peeve. Something that especially annoys you. That is a pet peeve. Something that only you, but it feels like, uh, I cannot take. For example, a pet peeve can be listening to other people uh, eating. Like, like, listening to the sounds of people eating that maybe annoys you a lot, and that can be a pet peeve. Let's see. Men's top 10 pet peeves. When she doesn't listen to my suggestions, when breaks too hard, when she drives too fast, some women top 10 pet peeves doesn't listen to my suggestions, drives too far, too fast, and tall gates. Okay, this is related to cars. We're gonna see some more pet peeves later on on the book. Hint. A piece of advice that helps you do something. Maybe you're not sure of what you have to do. But with a hint, it's like a small tip to continue with what you are doing. In-laws, relatives by marriage. Basically, your in-laws can be your father-in-law, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, etc. That are the new family that you get after you get married with your husband or wife. Mess. This is a mess. Everything disorganized. Nephew. A son of your sister or brother, or a son of the sister or brother of your husband or wife. For example, if you have a brother and they have children, then those children are your nephews. Uh, uh, okay, so sorry, sorry. It's a, yeah, it's your nephew. Maybe it's a nephew or niece. And it's the same if your wife or husband has a brother and they get siblings. You're also his uncle. Sci-fi. This is a short for science fiction, and it's related to all types of futuristic things. Super. A large pipe, usually underground, that is used for carrying waste water and human waste away from the buildings to a place where they can be safely got rid of. Basically, the sewers are the the tunnels that, that are underground to deliver the human waste, if you know what I mean. That's disgusting. Spaceship. It's a ship for the space. So it's a spaceship. <laughs> trumpet. It's this intro instrument. This is a trumpet. Okay, let's see some adjectives. Complicated. Something complicated. It's something that is really difficult or hard. Dated. Showing the facts or style of the past rather than of the present. Basically, dated is something old. What are other words for dated? Outdated, outmoded, antiquated, old fashioned, obsolete, archaic, impressionable, out of date, or behind the times. Everything, everything related to old things. Giant. A giant is something that is way bigger than it's supposed to be. For example, if there is a child that is this big, then she would be a giant. High pitched. A voice that is high pitched is higher than usual. For example, the sounds of kids, their, their voices are high pitched because of their uh, chordal, uh, I don't remember the word for that, but basically their voice are not fully developed yet, so they are high pitched. Inconsiderate. Not thinking about the feelings or needs of other people. Brooke is inconsiderate be towards her neighbors. She throws her trash wherever she pleases in her community. Basically, to be inconsiderate is when you don't think of other people and you don't care, basically. It's similar to selfish, but selfish is thinking only about you. Inconsiderate is not thinking about the other people. That is not the same. Overnight, for or during the night. Similar words for overnight, night long, all night, adventure, theoric, 
temporary tour, travel, swift, nocturnal voyage. Wow. Tricky. It is difficult to deal with and needs careful attention or skill. Something tricky is something kind of hard or complicated. Trust is a tri tricky thing. thing. Yes. Understanding. The ability to understand something. Comprehension. Okay, let's see some verbs. Argue. When you argue, it's when you discuss in a bad way. It's like almost fight with your words. And that it's to argue. Baffle. To cause someone to be completely unable to understand or explain something. Some other words for baffle are puzzle, mystify, bewilder, thwart, frustrate, perplex, foil, confuse, confound, done, plus. Basically, to baffle is to make something really, really, really difficult to understand. So if you say that you baffle me, it's like you're telling things that I am not being able to understand because of the way that you're saying it. Blame. To say or think that someone or something did something wrong or is responsible for something bad happening. When you blame someone, it's to say like, okay, it's his fault. This happened, this bad thing happened because of him or her. Borrow. Can I borrow some money? Yes. Basically, when you lend something, it's when you give something that is yours for a, for a period of time to another person. And borrow is the opposite. It's when you take something that is not yours for an amount of time. Okay? For example, he is lending her a pencil and she is borrowing him a pencil. Chew. To crush food into smaller, softer pieces with the teeth so that it can be swallowed. When you're eating, you chew your food before swallowing it. Clean up. To clean up is to clean, to disinfectate, to make everything nice. <laughs> and okay, yeah, basically to clean up. To clean up is to clean up, yes. Fall asleep. When you fall asleep, you start sleeping. Synonyms, drop off. Go to sleep, doze off, or note off. When you fall asleep, it's when you're starting to sleep, basically. To flee, it's to run away or to escape. Here, it's when you use this uh, type of sense, the auditive sense, it's when you're here. To interrupt, it's when someone is doing something and you stop them from doing what they are doing. That's interrupting. Imagine that I'm going to tell. And I got interrupted. That is an interruption. Make up an excuse to create a reason for something. Okay, you remember excuses? Well, a verb is to make up an excuse. It's when you are creating it. To pack. When you pack, it's when you put things in small boxes or different places, like a carry-on bag, to get it to other places, basically. Pretend. Behave so as to make it appear that something is the case when in fact it is not. And you pretend it's when you're like being like another thing, but it's not really that. For example, she is pretending to be or he is pretending to be a superhero, but he or she is not really a superhero. Ring. To make bell to now produce sound. To phone someone or to surround someone or something. Basically, it's like the phones that they ring. <laughs> also, that can mean to call someone or to be in a ring around the person or thing. Sleep one's mind. To be forgotten, especially of an obligation. When it slips your mind, it means that it gets out of the way without you wanting to happen. Squeal. To make a long, very high sound or cry. It's a scream, but in a very high sound, it's a squeal take place. What are other words for take place? Occur, happen, come about, pass, go on, befall, transpire, fall out, chance, come to pass. When something takes place, it means that it occurs or it happens. Turn. When you turn, it's when you're going on a straight line and you go either to the right or the left, left or right. Redraw, to take or move out or back, 
or to remove when you sorry when you withdraw it's basically when you are taking something from a place other words are retire retreat recall take back take away remove take out draw back leave or retract as well okay yawn to open the mouth wide and to take a lot of air into the lungs and slow it, send it out, usually when tired or bored. When you're sleepy and you want to sleep, you usually jump before that and you're like, oh. Okay, let's do some adverbs. Besides, in addition to someone or something else that is being mentioned, it's like they're saying things and you say besides because you're going to mention another thing. Example, Jojo is beside but. Jojo has many friends besides Thought. Beside it's one of the proposition of place, but besides is this. Jojo has many friends besides Thought. Okay? So this is Jojo. This is Thought. And he has many friends besides apart from Thought. Constantly. It means always or regularly. Okay, that was all of the vocabulary for today. We're gonna come back here when we get to the grammar. But for now, Let's go to the book. Okay? Very good. Okay, so we have the unit 13. What might have been? In this unit, we're going to be looking at suggestions, explanations, and reasons, and giving opinions and advice about past situations. That's going to be in the next video. But for this one, we're going to be suggesting explanations and reasons. And we're going to start with this snapshot. Pet peeves, as we were telling, things that annoy you person okay let's read some of them it drives me it drives me crazy when people push too close to me on the subway i don't care about that it drives me crazy when someone borrows my things without asking that is a pet peeve of mine it drives me crazy when people keep interrupting me yeah that annoys me a lot it drives me crazy when a couple starts arguing in public yeah i don't mind about that it's just that it's a bit uncomfortable it drives me crazy when people don't pay for their share at a restaurant. That is not annoying, that is offensive. How come you're not gonna pay for your thing? It drives me crazy when a friend criticizes another friend. Yeah, that's true. It drives me crazy when someone is late for no reason. And eh, depending on the person. It drives me crazy when people chew with their mouths open. It really drives me crazy. It drives me crazy when a friend constantly asks me for favors. Nah, I don't care too much about that. And it drives me crazy when someone cuts in line in front of me. Oh, that's not, that's something that I cannot stand. But what about you? Do you find that these are your pet peeves? If not, what are your pet peeves? You can comment them down below. I will be waiting for your answers. Okay, let's continue. Now we're going to have conversation we're gonna listen to part a and part b of he might have gone out and after listening to part b we're gonna listen we're gonna answer the question what happened in this situation okay okay so let's listen and then we're gonna check okay and then we're gonna check okay okay let's listen unit 13 what might have been page 86 Exercise 2. Conversation. He might have gone out. Part A. Listen and practice. Didn't Tyler ask us to come at 7.30? Yes, and it's almost 8 o'clock now. Why don't we ring the bell again? He must not have heard it. That's impossible. We've been ringing the bell for more than 10 minutes. He must have fallen asleep. You know Tyler has been working so hard on his new project. Or he might have forgotten about our dinner and just gone out. No, he couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to him about it this morning. Besides, the lights are on. He could have had an emergency. He might not have had time to call us. Yeah, maybe. I'll call him and find out. And? He's not answering. Now I'm getting worried. Page 86, Exercise 2, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What happened? Look, there's Tyler coming down the street. Hey, Tyler, what happened? 
You won't believe how stupid I was. I came outside to take the trash to the garbage can, and I locked myself out. And worst of all, my cell phone was locked inside. So that's why you didn't answer my call. Yeah, and I couldn't call you because I didn't remember your number. That's the trouble with smartphones. Nobody remembers anyone's number anymore. So what did you do? I walked to the gas station and called a locksmith. He said he would arrive in about half an hour. He must be on his way. I'm sorry for all this. You guys must be starved. Well, I brought some dessert. Would anyone care for a piece of pie? Okay, really interesting. So tell me, did you get the answer for what happened to Tyler? If you do, let's chat. Well, Tyler locked himself out of his house, and he walked to the gas station and called the locksmith. That's what he did. If you have this answer, very good. You are correct. Okay, now let's go to this part, the pronunciation part. Reductions in past models. I really like the pronunciation parts. Okay, we're gonna first listen to both parts, and then we're gonna practice, okay? Okay, so pay close attention and listen, then we're gonna practice. Page 87. Exercise 3. Pronunciation. Reduction in past modals. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have is reduced in these sentences. He may have fallen asleep. She might have gone out. Page 87. Exercise 3. Part B. Listen and practice. Notice that not is not contracted or reduced in these sentences. He might not have had time to call us. She must not have heard the doorbell. Okay, very good. Now let's practice. Okay, so in the first part right here, we're seeing that, uh, listen, and that have is being reduced. So instead of saying he may have fallen asleep, we say he may have fallen asleep. May have, may have, he may have fallen asleep. She might have gone out. No, she might have gone out. She might have gone out. In this case, it sounds like an R. She might have gone out. And on the second part, we see that not is not contracted or reduced sentences. So we don't say mightn't or mustn't. We say he might not have had time to call us. She must not have heard the doorbell. Okay, very good. Now let's go straight into the grammar focus for today. It's going to be something really interesting. Past models for degrees of certainty. That's going to be really, really interesting. And as always, I have a material for this. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so we have the past model for this. We know that to use the past models, we need to follow this structure. We use the model, then the have, then past participle. Okay, for a suggestion or regret, we say should have, or possibility, could have, and for intention, would have. Okay, then use the past participle. I should have gone to the party. I could have gone to the party. I would have gone to the party. These sentences are the same, the only difference is the model that are being seen here. For possibility, could. For intention, would. And for suggestion, regret, should. Okay? Okay. So, now, after learning, remembering all of this, how to use the past models, now we're going to be seeing the models of certainty. We have must, could, may, or might. Okay? And... Here we have, where is John? John, Eric, and Emily. John is missing. So where is John? Now we're going to be using some models of certainty. For definitely, we use must. He must be sick. He must not feel well. Okay? So notice something. You know that we can say mustn't in some situations. But when we're using the models of certainty, or of certainty like this, we cannot reduce not. We just say must not okay and must if for something that you're definitely sure he must be sick he must not feel well okay but 
possibly or possibility, it's good. He could be on vacation. He couldn't be here. Okay. And then maybe for a possibility, if we use may or might, he might be late. He may not be on time. Okay. Very good. Okay. Some other last words for of certainty to describe the speculation for why something happened. Definitely, again, we would must not. And the past participle, he must have come late too often. He must not have been very punctual. Okay. So he got fired from his job. Why? Well, he must have come late too often. He must not have been very punctual. But possibly, or possibility, he got fired from his job because he could have slept at work too much. He couldn't have been working very hard. And maybe with might and may not have plus plus participle. He got fired from, from his job. Why? He might have yelled at the boss and he may not be very respectful. That might be the situations. And these are the bottle pass models of certainty. They are really easy. Okay. Now that we saw this, let's see this. Okay. The ones on the book. It's almost certain. Again, we use must or must not. He must have fallen asleep. He must not have heard the doorbell. If it's not possible, he couldn't have forgotten about it. If it's possible, may or might. He may have gone out, or he might have gone out. He may not have had time to call us. He might not have had time to call us. And he could have had an emergency. That will be the last one, okay? Very good. I hope, I hope that you understand this, and I know you do, because you're really, really intelligent, and this is really easy. But if not, remember that you can ask questions in the comments, or just watch it again, okay? Okay, so... Now, if you do understand, let's do this activity right here. You're going to read each situation and choose the best of explanation, okay? And then pay, and pay attention to the reduced forms in the past models, okay? So we have situation and explanations. Take your time to match them, okay? Okay, you finished. Let's check. Okay, so number one. Marcia seems very relaxed. It's letter C. She might have just come from back from vacation. Number two, Claire is packing her things. A, she must have gotten fired. Three, Jeff got a bad grade on his test. It's letter E, he might not have studied very hard. Number four, Rodrigo looks very tired today. It's letter B, he might have worked late last night. And five, Julia didn't talk to her friends in the cafeteria. F. She must have not seen. She must not have seen them. And the last one. Ahmed got a call and looked worried. That's letter D. He couldn't have heard good news. If you have those answers, very good. You are correct. Now let's do the last thing for today. That it's gonna be a listening. You're gonna look at the pictures and what do you think it happened? Then, after taking your time and looking at this and getting explanations for this, you're going to listen to the explanation for the two events in part A. And what did happen? And how similar were your explanations? Okay? So first, take your time to get explanations of what happened in these two pictures. And then, listen and check how similar they were and what actually happened. Okay? Okay. Take your moment to get your explanations for this. Okay, now after you got your explanations, let's listen. Page 87. Exercise 5. Listening. What could have happened? Part B. Listen to the explanations for the two events in Part A and take notes. What did happen? How similar were your explanations? 1. Last Saturday was a long day. We were going to my grandparents' 50th anniversary party, and we had to catch a plane at 7 a.m. We planned to get there early to spend time with my family. But during the night, we lost power, so our alarm clock never woke us up. We got up two hours late, missed our flight, and had to catch the next plane. We even changed into our clothes for the party at the airport to save time. It was a close call, 
but we arrived just when everyone was sitting down to dinner. I'm so glad we made it, but what a stressful trip. Two. You wouldn't guess it from her size, but our little dog Sheba is really adventurous. She loves to play in our backyard and chase birds, but when we come home, she is always waiting for us by the door. But yesterday, when my daughter and I got home, we couldn't find Sheba anywhere. My poor daughter was so upset she couldn't stop crying. Someone must have left the back gate open, and she must have escaped. Luckily, my neighbor saw her running down the street and was able to pick her up. Ten minutes after we got home, she knocked on the door with Sheba in her arms. What a relief. Okay, very good. Remember that if you need to listen one more time, just go back in the video and listen again. But did you get the answers for this? What did happen and how similar were your explanations? Okay, let's talk. Well, on the number one, they woke, when they woke up late, missed their flight and had to catch the next plane. They arrived, they arrived just as dinner started. Okay. And on the number two, his dog Shiba escaped because someone left the back gate open. Their neighbor saw the dog on the street, rescued her, and took her back home. Interesting. Were your explanations similar to these ones? Please let me know on the comments down below. But that's been everything for this class. On the next class, we're going to be continuing by giving opinions and advice about past situations. So I hope that you look forward into it. But that's been a great one today. So see you in the next time. Bye.